We've got Andrew Gorman and Dan Feeney. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the September 21st, 2022 Sutton Conservation Meeting. If we could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, we have Mike McGovern is absent tonight, as well as Wanda Bean. And present tonight is Tim, Jamie. Nicole and Robin and Bill. Uh, no one is on Zoom from this board. First thing up, 6.30 is a continued public hearing for 3 Lackey Dam Road. I'll make a motion to waive the reading. I second. Nicole made a motion to waive the reading. Robin seconded to call to vote. Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Welcome back, guys. Thank Name you. and address for the records, please. Sure. Um, Dan Feeney. I'm a professional engineer at Bales & Thomas. Um, also here with me tonight is Andrew Gorman, a wetland scientist at Bales & Thomas. And in the audience is Leo Layton from USMA, um, the applicant and developer for the project. Brandon, do you have an update for us with the, with the guys here? They have a presentation. They've if, got a... If, you if ready? Uh, or sure. Do you need so to pull me, it up? Let me... Uh, Share the screen and share. And here we go. Okay. Great. So we just wanted to provide a, a fairly brief overview of where we're at and and you know um, where we've come from. So um, if you go to the next side, Brandon. Sure. Um, so this is. I don't know how to get rid of that thing on the right. I thought I did. Uh, don't worry. I, you know, if it if it conflicts, we'll we'll worry about it then. But um, so the site plan. Um, so this is similar to the site plan that we um, presented to the Conservation Commission the last time we were in. Um, and, and so since that time, we've just um, firmed up the details of the design. Um, so it was sort of at a schematic level before. Um, and so we have um, issued full updated site plans. It's a, probably about a, a 15 to 20 uh, plan sheet set, um, as well as um, a conservation restriction plan, a draft proposed conservation restriction plan as well. So, uh, but the details have, have largely stayed the same um, from what we presented the last time. Um, and, and, and as the commission may remember, that is um, keeping work outside of the 50 foot aura area, except um, for the small amount um, associated with detention basin number three located at the northeast portion of the site. Um, just the outlet pipe from that basin um, is, is goes into the 50 to 25 foot or area up there and it's a it's a it's a really small area just enough to daylight a pipe um, from the basin bottom elevation so again it's it's largely um, consistent with the previous design um, the plant set also um, if you go to the next slide um, does include some tree impact areas. Um, so one of the items um, that the Conservation Commission had requested was that a tree survey be done um, for trees within the limit of work um, within the Auror area. Um, so we did do a tree survey um, and have cataloged the trees that are within that area. So there's a table um, on the plans that corresponds to the, to the tree numbers there. Um, and we also took a, a deeper dive at the trees that are within the 50-foot aura where the canopy um, extends um, beyond the zero to 50-foot, like into the 50-foot into the to, say, 60-foot um, aura area that are likely to be impacted um, by development. Um, so we have identified those trees um, that we would recommend that they be um, cut um, so not stumped, but just cut um, and then um, replaced in the general vicinity. Um, so, um, and that would that would 
you know, be part of the overall uh, mitigation plan. Obviously, the, the largest part of the mitigation plan is the conservation restriction that's being proposed on the <coughs> parts of the site that are to remain undeveloped. Um, there is also invasive species removal um, within um, both wetland um, areas as well as the aura area and extending into um, the conservation restriction areas um, as well as um, the tree replacement for the trees that are specifically uh, being cut within the the 50 foot aura and obviously they're they're at the edge of the 50 foot aura we're not going you know too close into the BVW but you know based on um, the size of the trees and, and the root structures out there we've identified the trees that we think need to be um, removed and, and so there's those two areas um, both at the uh, southwest area um, along the, the loading dock and the entry drive as well as the northwest area up by basin number three where there's there's areas where those uh, trees so it ends up being approximately 30 trees that we think um, you know may may struggle to survive if you know if not cut and then uh, replanted so um, that's an overview of that and then if you go back down um, to the to the conservation restriction plan this is this is unchanged really from from what we presented at the last hearing um, you know other than we've included basically all the areas um, that are outside um, the limit of work um, in Sutton. So, um, you know, it's it's a total of about, I believe it's about 22 um, acres. Um, the total area in Sutton on the site's about 40 acres. So it's it's a little bit over half of the total total area of the site. Um, and, you know, the balance of it being the, the, the development area of the site. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and then we, we just included some of the um, other plans within the set in case the um, commission had specific questions. Um, I know, I, I think one of the things um, um, that's been mentioned in the past is the um, is snow storage. Um, so we have some proposed swales on the western side of the site that are located out of the buffer zone. And the swales get collected within in area drains and get um, piped to the stormwater management system. Um, so actually, if you go to the uh, go further down to the grading and drainage plans, um, not this one. Yeah, one more sheet, I think. Well, no, nope, one more after this one. I apologize. Um, so on the left hand side of this plan, um, towards the bottom of the plan. Um, you can see the contours for a swale down there. So those swales are proposed um, also, so they'll, they'll catch the overland flow uh, before it hits the pavement, but they also uh, will be able to provide for snow storage. And if you go to the next sheet down, there's a swale um, sort of at the northern section of the loading dock area as well, yep. Um, right on the left-hand side, they yep, heading down there. And again, those areas are, are outside of the, um, the buffer zones, um, the aura areas down in there. So th those are the two primary areas, and then the employee parking would be located around um, the septic system. We don't want to plow on top of the septic system and, and you know put more of a surcharge of water um, where the septic effluent would be discharging into the, into the ground. Um, so um, and and I know I've I've given an overview of the stormwater system. We're still awaiting uh, final comments from the Planning Board, Civil Engineering, Peer Reviewer, Graves Engineering. Um, they had issued an initial uh, review letter um, which had some minor comments on the stormwater. It was more um, the details of some of the pipe inverts and things like that, um, which we've addressed within the updated plans. And we also obviously updated um, the stormwater management calculations based on a reduction in pervious area. and. Um, basin three um, being downsized um, based on that reduction. The, the reduction of impervious area from the site is mainly based on the reduction of the building um, up at the uh, northeast corner of the building. Um, and also there was a loss of about 40, 45 parking spaces and, and four tractor trailer parking spaces as well. So based on that reduction in impervious area, we've, we've updated the stormwater system, but the stormwater system is designed to meet the standards of the Massachusetts Stam, uh, Stormwater Handbook, um, providing treatment 
um, through proprietary systems um, collected with each sump. Uh, hooded catch basins going through a proprietary treatment system and then being discharged into the basins, um, which are located above the groundwater and will provide infiltration um, for the low flow storm events. Uh, with the larger design storms being mitigated by um, the attenuation of peak flows within the volume being provided. So that's an overview. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Good update. Brandon, have you reviewed all this as well? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this point, uh, the applicant has scaled down the, the project as requested to the, the parameters that were requested. They did the, the tree study. Um, they've made you know the adjustments that were more or less requested and, and that they've taken up on their own as well. So um, I think we've done our job. Um, and when I say our job, I, I mostly mean Greg. I'd like to give him a shout out for doing such a, a, a good job uh, handling this one. Yeah, um, there's a lot going on, and at this point, uh, it, it's kind of come down to the vote and how comfortable each member is uh, with the scale of this project. So it's I'm gonna Turn give it back. over to you for your for your discussion. Thank you both. Thank you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Turn to the board. Any discussions? Questions? Two questions. Um. Well, not a question, a comment. Obviously, we'd like to see the Graves report before. I think it's important that we see that before we vote to make sure that it's consistent with what it needs to be. Um, sound walls. I went through, Wanda had sent us um, a document that had two PDFs attached that had drawing sets. I don't know if that's all that's been submitted. There was, a, in those, there was kind of a, a cutout or a detail of you know a little bit of an artist's rendition as to what the sound walls would look like but there wasn't really an elevation or anything to kind of show us about heights and and i guess i kind of have a question for brandon yeah um for wildlife passage should they be broken or overlapped or something to facilitate the or is that well, when making you, a, a, a point out of something that's not a point. I really don't know. I should not I should have kept the screen up. Hold on a second. Okay. So let's look at the plan and, and maybe we can get, you know, when you say wildlife habitat connectivity, looking at that, what, what are you talking about really? Because if you're talking about like wildlife con connectivity from this side to this side, uh, they, they're going to be going over parking lot and roadway no matter where they are. Um, but there will be connectivity along the wetland long longitudinally, which is one of the reasons why the commission likes to keep at least 25 feet of the buffer zone cleared for wildlife passage. So, you know, longitudinally, uh, you know, parallel to the wetland, that has the minimum uh, amount of passage that the commission likes to see but uh, from like wetland over here to wetland over here um, is really no connectivity because they would have to traverse around the building and over parking lot and over road but uh, part of that area is non-jurisdictional anyway so yeah. yeah and I guess the area the sound walls essentially enclose all the impervious surface right so there's not really e yeah, um, not quite. So, so the sound walls are located um, based on where tractor trailers would traverse on the site, um, and where there are sensitive receptors. So, sensitive receptors being people's houses, um, you know, areas like that where where you know an increase in sound would cause a, a potential nuisance. Um, so, um, there there is. Um, sound walls along the loading dock side but they stop right at the 100 foot aura area on that side so there's no sound wall heading further south uh, on that side um, down the lackey dam road because of a lack of sensitive receptors heading back towards the west there um there the sound wall that starts on the western side 
basically continues up um, towards um, Oakhurst Road because the tractor trailers would be um, in the loading dock area or, or potentially in the in the tractor trailer um, space up there. So it would, would head up um, basically you know just short of Oak, Oakhurst Road, um, and then it picks up um, on the other side um, and runs you know um, sort of east west parallel to Oakhurst Road along by where the detention basin is and then as it sorts to get to the bottom of this page um, it does stop um, right at the the 50 foot over because again we, we have no no work in the 50 foot over other than that little little section of the detention basin outlet so it would come down that far and it doesn't need to come down any further to the south from there because that's just the employee parking area so any sounds from trucks um, from the loading dock or from other areas would essentially, the noise would be blocked by the building itself. Okay. Um, so there's no need to have a sound wall all along there. Um, so there is also, I should note, a sound wall along the um, the western side, um, I'm sorry, the eastern side of the entrance drive. So um, as you come into the site in, in Uxbridge and continuing up into Sutton, there is a sound wall there because again, the sensitive receptors would be the houses, um, you know, along the other side of Lackey Dam Road there. So there is one on that side of the road, um, not on the on the, the the down gradient side of the road, but on the up gradient side of the road there. So um, so that's that's sort of an overview of where they are in terms of the heights. Um, they they generally range from from 10 to 25 feet, and a lot of that has to do with the adjacent grades. Um, you know, there's a there's a sm smaller sound wall up to the north because um, it's it's going to be located up at the top of a hill there, so you don't have to go as high because the hill's taking some of the sound out, so the sound wall just has to go. It's it's really based on the top of the sound wall versus the pavement elevations because you're trying to capture that sound from the trucks. It's not stationary sounds that would cause a problem out here, anything associated with the building, anything like that. It's 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 the trucks themselves. The um, I believe you mentioned in the presentation that for the trees that um, fall inside the limited disturbance, the ones that are that are susceptible to that there were roughly 30 of them and you were kind of cut them and as part of your remediation plan you were kind of replaced them with something of like species or okay. correct okay correct yes and then i have a question for brandon mm -hmm. um i haven't seen a copy of the conservation restriction that they um forwarded in and i haven't as a board member haven't done one um is is what we have a good starting point for the discussion in terms of how i mean we can talk we could create a condition but i mean is it are we headed down the right path or do we need to provide i think we're them? heading down the right path i guess that one of the things that would be good for discussion is is what things um would the commission allow to continue what kind of activities would would you think would be okay uh, within the restriction area and what things do you think would not be okay i i'm guessing that you know further development would not be okay but maybe a uh, walking path for employees to go out on oh, lunch absolutely. would yeah. be something that would be allowed you know that kind of thing picnic area right yeah right yeah, yeah. Like, you know like, like over in in this area right here you know like maybe you have a perimeter path so they can get some exercise uh, you know and enjoy nature yeah it's a beautiful piece of land it would be nice to use it right, right. so you, you know you don't want to completely isolate it yeah, yeah and, I, and i think to, to that question we we've created a a conservation restriction plan showing the the limits of a cr but there hasn't been any um associated document um prepared i don't know if that's that's what you're referring to you know because you usually yeah not usually there would need to be a, a cr actual document that would talk about reserved rights or right. you, you know, know we prohibited should, uses we should things be like advancing that. that discussion right so that we're yeah kinda, it, you know it, it's been done a couple three times before most recently out on uh foster lane those two certified vernal pools and a draft CR was given to the Conservation Commission for discussion and ultimate approval so they could move forward but as far as finalizing the CR that is a process that takes quite a long time actually 
do we have a specimen copy of a document that we could send to them so that we could start getting our arms around some language and see yeah. if there's yeah the one the one on Foster Lane. In fact, I might even have a copy of it in here, in, in my computer. If you feel like taking a gander. No, I don't need to see but it, but I think it should be distributed, and we should be talking about it. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah. You know, if if you even need one, but I have example. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I have examples, but if there's right. something that the commission's been comfortable with in the past, it might be better to to start there than, you know, um, something I've done with with other jurisdictions. The last one was for a single family house. This is for a commercial, industrial kind of project, and not necessarily apples to apples. Right. There's no wrong way to do it, really. It's just every site's different. Yeah, I, th I think if, if we have a copy of that, we'll we'll look at that versus, you know, other examples and see if, you know, there's anything of any language that's, you know, concerning or, or you know, needs further refinement because this is a larger project. So I think, you okay. know. No, it would just be nice to start talking about something yeah. tangible. And whether that comes from us or you, it, yeah. I don't really think it's material, but a draft of something that we could put our arms around would be <coughs> And then you gave a shout out to Greg for the work that he's done on this. I'd also like to thank the applicant for be making themselves so available to us to work through some of the more significant details. I think that, um, yeah, it was a, I, I saw it as a positive experience. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate the time the commission's taken as well. Second that. That's it. Anyone else from the board? <coughs> There's one from the public tonight. It's a, you know, the example from uh, Foster Lane, yeah, it's, it's a, there's a lot to it. And I, I made even made some edits on it. You know, the, the reasons, you gotta state the reasons why you're doing it and then what uses are allowed and what not allowed. In this case, they were really trying to preserve the vernal pools. Awesome. I know one of the big holdups is the Graves report. Do we think we'll have that within two weeks? I think so. We we had um, resubmitted documents to the planning board a few weeks back. Um, so I do have um, a message into to Jeff Walsh from Graves just to try to get an update. But we are anticipating and hopefully we'll get it uh, within the two weeks. Does everyone feel that to date their questions have been answered? And okay, just wondering if there was anything else we wanted to throw at them tonight. Um, would two weeks be enough to continue? I think so. I think, you know, um, you know, one other item, just so you're aware, we, we have filed now with um, the Town of Uxbridge uh, Conservation Commission. The, the entry driveway there is located in Uxbridge. We wanted to, to get far enough along in Sutton. Obviously, 90% of the project is in Sutton. It's just the, the small amount of entry. But we do have work in their, their buffer zone. So we're meeting with them um, on October 3rd. So if your next hearing is is after that, I think that makes sense. It's on the fifth. It'd fifth. Be the okay. Fifth. So I think that would make sense. Okay. So October fifth is six forty. I'll make a motion to continue three Lackey Dam Road to October fifth at six forty. <coughs> I'll second. Nicole made the motion. Robin seconded. Nicole, how do you vote? Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. We'll see you on October fifth at six forty. Great. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, next up, it's 635. This is a new one that I need to read in. It's a public hearing for 188 Burbank Road. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act and the Sutton Bylaw 12 Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission will hold a hearing to review a request for determination, RDA, submitted by John and Lois Collins of Sutton, Mass. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 21st, 2022 at 635 p.m. The project consists of installing a French drain to alleviate water backup at 188 Burbank Road. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank Good you. Good evening. Just state both your names and addresses for the record. Lois Collins, 188 Burbank Road. Jared Collins, 188 Burbank Road. Welcome. So just a uh, French drain. Brandon, have you read you this? And um, Not as much as I would have liked to, but okay. we have prior history, so we have a good idea of what's yeah. going on already. Uh, okay. Burbank. I have pictures that I can, a couple of pictures anyway. Uh, 
I might not have as many pictures as I would like. <coughs> oh, Greg, where are you when I need you? At the Yankee Candle Factory. <laughs> <laughs> At the Yankee Candle. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll share this anyway. Yeah. Okay. Something tells me that's not where he is. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope he's not. <laughs> I would hope he's not. <coughs> okay, share. This is from last fall, anyway. The tree that came down. And all of it on our property. That's all. That's all I have on 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 digitally. Oh, the, the old school pictures coming around. Yeah, I guess Frank right. has these around. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. I had sent some pictures to Wanda at the beginning of the week, but I know she's out. So I don't know if she forwarded them or not. And I started this process early 2022, so that picture, I don't know where that, that picture's from. Yeah, I don't think that's us. It's in the Burbank, oh, 80, not eight, no, that's in the wrong Burbank. 188. One, 188. 188. So, you know what, that's my fault. We started this uh, in the, this spring, the 2022. I remember. And oh, you were before us previously, correct? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. You were before us previously. Yes. So this <laughs> is kind of the formal. Formal thing. Yep. So just putting a French oh. train in. There's obviously standing water. Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty straightforward. While where Brandon's looking, does anyone from the board have any questions or comments? No. Anyone from the public? I have. I get something better now. That's just the back. Ah, it looks more like it. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is go. up there and it used That's to be it. over there. <laughs> right. I have a theory on the property. And the theory is, is that the house was built, I think, in the 70s. 78. Yeah, back then the wetland protection laws weren't, they were on the books, but they weren't as strong. Um, and it, it would be no surprise to me if the backyard consists of fill material where a swamp used to be. And uh, when that, when you get a lot of water, um, it's going to come down the hill and go onto the, the lawn. And there was or is a, some kind of a pipe or yeah it looks like an old french drain with the plastic kind of garden tubing that you would use where that trash can is right there it's actually a fire can mm. a little bit before that if you if you were to walk back there it's all broken up it looks like so over the years um it was serving its purpose at one time whether it's clogged or just broken the whole way under the back of the property now it's not alleviating any of that water so by replacing that french drain and Using better construction material, that's hoping that we're going to alleviate that problem. All right. So my only question is that it, it, that's great for the, the owner. But the question is, is now where is this water going to go to and is it going to cause a problem for anyone else? Is it going to end up flooding someone else downhill? So to the left of our property, if you're looking at our backyard, there's an, a wooded area. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much space is between our house and the house behind, you know, on the side. Right. Okay. So where are we? Which are not, which are we? I see 188. Voila. Okay. So let me do this. Yeah, so it looks like property 21 right next to us. There's that field right there. Right here? Or, or no, 21, so the one up of it. Yep. That's all kind of like wet, wetlands right there on that property line. So that's where the current pipe 
before was draining into. Okay, so which which way is the water coming from? Over here? And going going from way? right to left, yep. Yeah. Right, and they show a stream right through mm -hmm. this pool, which kind of shows you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what happened in neighborhoods back then. This is part for the course in the 70s and even into the 80s. Um, and basically, you know, the, the folks today are trying to deal with the problems that were created back then and alleviate them. You know, I, I think of it kind of like a substandard septic system on a lot that would never have been approved today. But you can't tell them, okay, take it out and then move somewhere else. You can't do that. You just have to deal with the issue right. and just make sure that it gets done in a way that isn't going to cause someone else problems. So... Um, so based on, on what we're seeing here, what is the root of the, 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 the French drain that you want to make? It's the same, pretty much just replacing the one that, where that 260 number is. It's pretty much going at almost like a diagonal, and it would end up where the 9904 is kind of like in that area. Does that make sense to you? So right through here. Correct. Which is basically where that, it's going to go to where this little blue line is. Yep. And keep on following. You don't think it's going to end up like th these folks here are going to end up getting water in the back of their house? I, I mean, we could let it out. I, I hope not. But at the same time, if you look at property 260, there's two pipes going along their uh, driveway that are flooding into my area. So, I mean, like you said, it's a problem that they would never that you guys would never approve now. But right. I, I hate to say like that's their issue, but this is my issue that I'm dealing with now, right? Right. I know that um, when it is wet, we didn't have a lot of wetness this year. Last year we did, but in the spring we did. That's where those pictures were from with all the water that mm -hmm. you've first seen. There is wetness on their property, but it's not in their property. It's in the wooded area. So I don't know where it's draining to after that. We've never really talked to them about it. We probably, you know, maybe we should. I don't know. Um, I'm just not sure where it goes, but it doesn't, I don't see it coming out on Burbank Street as you're heading into Millbury. I mean, Burbank Road as you're heading into Millbury. Okay. So, so this is more or less the, the path of that, that drain. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be taking the water. See, my, my uh, theory is that this area back here used to be part of the swamp on this side and this side, but the, you know, the neighborhood's been filled in and the wetland's been compartmentalized. So the water's building up on this side and it's flooding into the yard. Mm -hmm. So by redoing the French drain, it'll help alleviate the flooding. Um, I don't see a problem with it. Um, and you might have to keep an eye on it and just make sure that the folks over at 21 don't get flooded out in the end. It's pretty far back from their yard. Um, the left side of there, like like yeah. she's saying, where t where that nine nine zero four is, right? That's never filled up with water. If that, and maybe that's because our French drain's been broken. But where that two sixty line is, where that wetland area is, I mean, I have ducks in there sometimes. You, you know, like yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Do we have any engineer drawings or any? Do we? We're this calling it a French yeah. drain. Do we know what? what the details of the construction are and what you're Just, looking to do? This was submitted as an, an RDA. It's basically in-kind repair, yeah, right? That's, right. It, that's, that's, what, it that's what it is. That's what it is. Right, and, and in-kind repair is an exempt activity. Um, so the, Just going to use newer, better pipe so it lasts. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't that's want to be doing this in 10 years again. I, I don't want to be doing it in 15 years again, you know what I mean? Like just... I want to make it better for the next person that eventually is going to take over this house, right? And they don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I've dealt with enough with the property already where it's like, if I can just fix this portion of it, you hopefully it'll be done. Do we know where the drain currently, if we're, if it's a like kind repair, is do we know what if what's <coughs> being discussed is consistent with what's there? It, I don't think there's ever an as-built made of it. Has, have we looked at it to see where it daylights and... Where? No. no. It's all collapsed and everything else, right? 
I would, I would presume I'm guessing so. it's been there for a while. It's been there for a long, long time. Right. Yeah. Maybe even 40. Can you find some of the pipe? Oh, it, it's, a, yeah. it's a plastic. It's the type of pipe that you put at the end of a, gu a gutter oh. Oh, they to were. reroute the water away from your house. So the way it was done was not done properly, and the pipe is broken. So if you can, I mean, it's all broken and it's all junk. Yeah, if, if you can kind of follow the same line of that pipe, I, to me, that's an in-kind repair, right? Great, is to me. You just upgrade the pipe to. That, that's all we're doing. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't either. Jim. I, the in-kind repair, I don't have an issue with. We have an undefined scope of what the repair is. And to the extent the repair exceeds what's in place and it creates an issue for a neighbor, I don't... Well, can we, I guess... I, I don't, I, I, I struggle with that. that when their neighbors did something that created an issue for them? I mean, Correct. this is a, a round and around and around. They're t wanting to take a pipe out and replace it with a 2022 standard pipe. I assume you're going to be putting it in the same place that it is. You're yeah. not going to be doing anything different. I don't know how we can uh, can continue to argue it. this. I mean, I agree. I just that I mean they clearly have standing water in their property, and there's enough the, space the between must their property for and some the actual of yard of the next neighbors. And they I have just, said there's no water that actually flows into where 9904 is. So I, I think it's just replacing something that That is standing broken. water is going to be mosquito heaven next year. I'm still you know? going to have water there. Don't, don't get me wrong. On 260, just, I'm still going to have water there. However, I'm not going to have that, as much. Mm. But I'm assuming that you're, you're being truthful with, with us and you're going to take out the mm. dilapidated pipe that's there and put it in with the 2022 standard right correct to try to alleviate a little bit of your issue correct anybody I else don't i don't either just don't throw the old pipe in the wetland <laughs> <laughs> no there's uh no nope not at all <laughs> uh anyone from the public I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Call me a motion to close the public hearing. Robin seconded to call a vote. Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Uh, Jamie, how do you vote? Nay. I do vote aye. I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination for 188 or Bank Road. I'll second. Call me a motion to issue a negative determination. Robin seconded to call a vote. Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Uh, Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill vote aye. Excuse me, nay. A negative Jamie's determination, nay. Yes. Nay. And I bill vote aye. <coughs> right. Thank you very much. Good luck with the project. Thank, Good you. Luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next up, 640. It's now 707. It's a uh, continuation of 236 Central Turnpike. Oh, I'll make a motion to waive the public reading. Sorry. I'll second. Nicole made a motion to waive the reading. Robin seconded Nicole, you vote? Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Uh, Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill for I. Welcome back. Thank you. Rolf Mankaris was Alpha Omega Engineering. I think we were waiting for the DEB file number, and we have that. And we do. For the Thankfully. <laughs> yep, 303-0973. Yep. Any new comments from the board? None. Anyone from the public here for this? Okay. Brandon. Uh, so um, to reiterate one more time about any potential wetlands on the west side? Yes, there is there is some upland on the west side, but we, my client doesn't care about it because it does not create is not enough to create another buildable parcel. Right. So what I'd like to do, Mr. Chairman, is just make a note in the NRAD that there are um, upland areas west of uh, where they flagged, but that they were not delineated, and at the moment that entire area will be presumed to be BVW. But I want to make the note that there are some upland, I guess you call them, quote unquote, islands. So in case 10, 20 years from now, somebody comes back and they do a review and they say, well, they called it all wetland back then and no one is around anymore, there'll be a note to say so that there was something, but it just wasn't considered at the time. Easy enough. I can't write that fast. Anybody else have any other comments before we go to 
vote. Everyone's making notes. I'm cheating. Did you vote? There's an island. And no one from the public, right? Nope. All right, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Nicole made a motion to close the public hearing. Robin seconded to call vote. Aye. Robin already vote. Aye. Tim already vote. Aye. Jamie already vote. Aye. Can I bill vote aye? I'll make a motion to, up, what is it, approve the... Oh, what is that when you approve an ORAD? ORAD, right, Brandon? An ORAD, yeah, Order of Resource Area Delineation. I'll make a motion to issue an Order of Resource Delineation with the exception that the upland areas west of where it's been flagged was not delineated but assumed to be BVW and I missed the last part. <laughs> Islands, therefore something, nothing there now but it might a, be As so noted by time. Brandon. As noted by Brandon. I'll second. <laughs> Nicole made a good motion. You. I'm good enough. Does that work? <laughs> Nicole made a motion. Robin second and Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Bill, vote aye. Thank you very much. Thank have a good you. night. <laughs> Next up, um, <laughs> we have an update on 224 Manchar Grove for Jessica Burnell. Okay. So Jessica <clears throat> is online. Hi, yes. I'm just going to grab her from a patient room. Okay. We'll wait for Jess. Did everyone review the minutes of August 17, 2022? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 17th. I'll second. Nicole made a motion to approve the minutes of August 17th. Robin seconded to call vote. Aye. Robin already vote. Aye. Tim already vote. Aye. Jamie already vote. Aye. Aye. Bill vote aye. Thank you, sir, for the delay. No problem. Welcome back. How are you, Jess? I'm well. Um, Brandon, so we, what are we just doing a review on this? Doing a review and update. Um, and I can uh, update the commission um, in that we had our latest court date. It was continued so that a um, few more issues can be um, addressed <laughs> and we can hopefully clean this whole thing up and also um, I didn't want to close out the court hearing without first having the Commission yourselves decide about whether or not you want to vacate the fines whether you want to enforce the fines whether you want to partially vacate the fines etc cetera, etc cetera. I didn't want to make that decision unilaterally okay okay so um, I'll go over some some pictures um, they were taken by Greg a couple weeks ago on the, well, not even like a week ago. <coughs> this is the um, landscape uh, restoration plan on the side of the driveway. Uh, otherwise, a, a good job uh, done, uh, but this, this pile of materials needs to go before I think this can get uh, closed out. And so sorry. Just, feel, so feel that is to that's step in any time, Jess. Yeah, that the wood is no. It's my ex husband's wood, and I don't have. Um, he wants the wood, and he can't come to take it. So I don't have permission to move it or get rid of it. Um, but I don't trust me. I don't want a pile of wood there. But um, I just don't have a way to remove it just yet, just because uh, it's there's that's part of division of assets, and we're not there. And I don't want that to hold us up months just because it's old wood. It's wood from the trees that was milled. Also, looks like you get some stones, the landscape. Yeah, rocks. Okay. And we'll go down to uh, the bottom of the hill. Uh, I think this pile of wood uh, should go. This is the Welland restoration area, and I think that they did a good job of cleaning it up, um, but as of right now, the, the Welland is just getting started with the, with the germination. Okay. It is, yeah. It was difficult for me to water down there, um, but it was planted in mid-August. There was just a miscommunication. I did tell, let 
uh, Greg know, um, but it was planted in mid-August. It's just been the, the watering was challenging, but it's sprouting a lot more now just because we've had more rain, which has been great. Um, the pile of wood is, I've got a lot of trees that fall, so I have to keep uh, having them just kind of cut up. Um, I'm, I've been slowly burning it, but I have to do it carefully and I have to get permits when I'm burning. So it's just been slow to burn to get rid of. Right. But I'm happy to, to get rid of the pile. We have a bunch of uh, mulch over here as well. Yep, that's the clippings from the, there was a big, if you remember, there was a, a big stump that was, I don't know, like three feet. So I had to grind down the stump and that's the clippings. That's like the mulch from the uh, stumps that were there. So uh, through the chair, is it uh, Jessica's intention to keep the mulch there and let it biodegrade? Correct. Okay. As you can see, the, the uh, patio was constructed. There's a little bit of a retaining wall I wasn't expecting, but it doesn't really expand the, the extent of the, the patio. Um, yeah. And Greg measured the patio and then all of it's done perviously um, as well, according to the, the specs. The wall they said had to be there in order to retain it to keep it uh, together. Right. We also have the issue of these lights. Um, I, uh, I take them down in the winter. I just put them up in the, in the summer. They're like uh, drilled into a couple of the dead trees, but I'm happy to, I take them down for the winter typically just because I don't want them to break or anything. That was They're plastic never, as well. That was never on the plan, so I'll, I'll leave that for discussion for the commission. Okay. Um, okay, next. Get out of my way here. Here we go. More mulch and there's chairs and kayaks the original plan had a path going down to this little bridge going and then to the dock to the left of it and to the right of it we're supposed to be in the area where um, no disturbance was allowed and I just see continuing encroachment into these areas so I want to point that out to the Commission Now turning around and looking back up. Um, you can see that we have a uh, six foot wide, Greg measured it, it is six feet wide. It's mm -hmm. a pervious paver walkway. It's very nice. Um, it was never brought to my attention. We have had some discussion uh, about how it got there, why it got there, should it have been there. Uh, here's my opinion on the end. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, if it had remained gravel, it probably would have continued to erode down the hill. It's also better than like a cement or con uh, stamped concrete path because then that would have acted like a sluice way. At least this way, the water will infiltrate and it prevents erosion. Okay, so that's my opinion on the walkway. I just wish that there had been more coordination with me on that. We have, uh, there, there was some stone over here on the left hand side, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, I see some grass here on the left hand side. Uh, you know, in the original plan, you had this uh, gravel path six feet wide and then on either side was part of well on the left hand side as you see in this picture that was part of the the view corridor which they're allowed to cut once per year yep. and now we have two strips of biodegradable uh, 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 erosion control blanket which is good my fear is that that the grass right there will be continued to be mowed when it's really supposed to look more like this over here, more of a natural state, all the way up to the edge of the walkway. And the same goes to the right side. I remember there was a lot of material stockpiled over here, so I understand that you know the, the materials were taken out, which is good, uh, and it had to get seeded and stabilized. But I'm also uh, concerned that that might turn into a permanent lawn area 
So um, I want to bring that to the commission's attention. Okay. So I thought that when you had said, so I had to reduce the walkway from like some places it was 12, 10 feet down to six feet. And then in our revised um, notes that I was supposed to put, um, I was supposed to put dirt and then uh, field mix grass, uh, logging grass on the sides to stabilize it. Cause on the hill, so I thought that that's what I was supposed to do in that area as well. That, that's what I, I thought it was. So if I misinterpreted that. Um, well, the area is stable, I mean, which I, is good, right? Yeah, and, and if I didn't put something there, when they were having these rainstorms, it was it's starting to wash. So that's why he, the contractor said to put down the biodegradable stuff so that once the grass grows, that will probably stop happening. It was to prevent the erosion. I thought that I was doing well. It, it, it is, and it has. That's great. I'm just concerned that that might turn into a permanent lawn area that gets mowed when that was never the intention. I want to bring that to the sure. commission's attention. That either side of the walkway is supposed to be in a more natural state, kind of like this over here. On the, on the right side, it was supposed to be more uh, naturally forested and just left alone. Okay. Um, I think I already showed this one. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, this is, this is the wetland right here underneath. They, they did the little bridge over the wetland. Mm -hmm. it, it's supposed to be tight to the walkway. And I, I see, you know, recreational stuff, for lack of a better term, you know, here and there and everywhere. And that was never the attention. The original attention and the original order of conditions was the six foot wide path, a 200 square foot recreational area. There was no shed proposed. Um, you know, and that 200 square foot area was a place where you could have some chairs and you could store your kayaks or your, your, you know, your tubes and stuff. Um, and that has definitely expanded over time. We now have a, a, a large, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it a shed. It's more of a recreational, like, cabana. Uh, yeah, it's where I, keep, I mean, that's where I put all the kayaks and uh, paddle boards in the winter. It's where I, I stack them all inside in the winter, too. Right. My, my, my concern here is just long-term encroachment into the areas that were never intended to be, be used. Sure. Uh, another close-up of the the wetland area. You know, we get some tiki torches there too, with a with some a stone edge that was never approved. I did the with. stone edge because I didn't want the mulch to get into that area. I was trying to protect it, and I put the tiki torch just so I could tell my kids don't go past that because otherwise it's mushy, and so they know do not go past the lights. It's kind of just they come right out. I just put it there so that they have a physical barrier they know that they can't walk in that area or go in it physical barrier i think that might be a good idea for further discussion um again, again all this left hand side here uh the, the, the canoe is my ex-husband's that's going to that's his so that's leaving right this these materials the ma here not yep i don't I know what this i would love to move the materials i just i can't physically lift them so i've like I, I plan to, and I want them gone. I just have to be able to get them up and get the time to do it. But the plan is not for me to keep construction debris there at all, no. Right. I don't know what this uh, anchor blanket is or something right here. Uh, it's it's an outdoor rug that I put there because the uh, it was very muddy. So anytime that we were walking, it was very muddy. So I didn't want to plant anything, put anything there. I just put the rug down temporarily to stop all the dirt. Okay, that eventually... I fold that up in the winter. Everything over here on the left-hand side is not supposed to be. There's supposed to be a natural area that you're supposed to stay out. That's what I'll say. So that's the last picture. So those are the, the, uh, the pictures that I took from Greg's overall set of pictures to, to show to the commission. You know, the question is, how satisfied is the commission with what's been done or not been done at this point? Otherwise, I'm going to say that a lot has been accomplished, but we still have these issues. I am concerned uh, mostly about long-term encroachment into the areas uh, that were never intended to be uh, utilized on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. I would say that in the last six months, I have worked on all 25 violations that you brought to me 
um, with with updates. And I, I mean, like, no one said you can't keep a canoe there. So, like, not an issue. It's easy to move. But, like, I, I focused on making sure that I had those 25 violations rectified with as a part-time job, making sure I had contractors, making sure that I had people showing up. This was not a small undertaking for me to do for the last six months. Um, my, I have spent every dollar that I have. Like I, I can't even begin to tell you how costly like this is. And I felt like I did every single violation. And when I did the walkthrough with Greg and Tim, I thought that that was the sentiment um, that I did, I, that I addressed all of the issues. There wasn't a 26 violation that said to remove the construction debris. Like I'm, I'm happy to. Those aren't those aren't issues. Like that's that's not a problem for me. I want to. I just don't always have like they're really long pieces of wood, so I have to do that and get someone to help me to do it. I'm happy to, but I just I was trying to address the 25 issues that you brought to me, and I thought that I did a good job in doing my best to do that. Over to you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Jess. Um, we've definitely seen this going moving, getting a lot of the 25 things done. Um, to the board, well, co well a couple things. One, we have a f open fee or fine, um, but Brandon, I believe you, your company was the one working on this with Jess, so have you been made whole, or your company, I should say, been made whole? We have not to date. Okay. Um, it was been about a year we've been working on this without, without receiving compensation, and I remember Jess asking for some some relief in that in that end and I had no problem doing it um, so that's that's where we are now it would be nice to be made whole at some point yep and the fines are up to what's it like 50,000 it's in the $50,000 range yeah the, if you remember back in the spring the Commission uh, paused the fines. locked the fine yep yeah. okay turn it over to the board uh, before you do I'll say the uh, the next uh, court hearing is uh, middle of October Okay, so it's about a month away. Mm -hmm. Any updates from anybody? Feelings, thoughts? Um, through the chair, I would want to make sure that a stipulation is that Brandon gets paid. I agree with that. Whether we vacate the fines or not, that one is going to stay on the books. He needs to be paid. Yeah, I agree with that. I also um, just maybe just needs to be made clearer that where it's considered a wetland like where you have the canoe and all that it's just not usable space for you at all like not because it's you can't store a canoe there it's because you can't do anything there it's that's part of the wetlands space like that's what we're here to protect so it's not because it's debris or because it's something specific it's because you can't do anything there so I feel like that needs to be kind of understood which normally we would have people put up the wetland signs exactly some kind of demarcation yeah the st we've yeah. been allowing the store out of bounds yeah. 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 Something, yeah yeah something that just so that you you understand and future owners also understand it's not usable space for any reason okay should we discuss the uh, fines and how we all feel about the um, one quick question when you had can you go back to the picture that looks up the hill you bet wasn't there a tree planting plan are the trees that were supposed to be planted there <laughs> the, the, the trees are there this small but we're good with the plantings okay, okay. All right. good yeah and they're holding up considering the that's good they are in the they are. summer Actually, we had. that's one of the bright spots is good. that I'm not really concerned and about everything the else at the top like where all the other stuff that was supposed to be done before you even get down to the walkway all that's all sorted out yeah, there, there's another small lawn area, which was something that um, was conceded uh, to give uh, her kids a little bit of a lawn area behind the house. So that view corridor was encroached in a little bit in order to allow a small lawn <coughs> area. So there's been, there have been concessions. Yeah. <laughs> there have been quite a few concessions. For sure. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you know, I just want to say one thing for the record. Um, when I was out there with Greg, <coughs> I didn't express any sentiment. Um, and she said that she thought that the sentiment was that whatever it was there was acceptable, but I uh, specifically didn't say anything. Um, in a perfect world, I'd like to see it an as built plan that's similar to the approved plan. And the approved, I went through and read the original order of conditions. I looked at minutes from the meetings going back to late 2015, um, but this isn't a perfect world. 
um, and she has worked on all of these things. Um, she's worked with Brandon for the most part, um, but I do share the sentiment that there is some, what did you call it, creep? Creep. On creep and, and recreation area. Recreational area, yeah, yeah, creep, I guess you could call yeah, it. Yeah, and that. And, and even to that point where she said the tree stump was why there was mulch there, but it continues all the way across into the front and in front of the pond. It's not designated to that one space, so that more, feels more intentional than because there's tree stump stuff. The only thing I will say about that is it's it's biodegradable. It's not actual mulch. I mean, it, it's it's grind. It's yeah. it's the same stuff the town of Sutton would use. Yeah, I mean, it's at least it's not treated. It's natural, um, and it will biodegrade. Like it will become nothing as long as she continues doesn't keep mulching it. I mean, yeah, right, would. that would have to be an issue, I guess, that we want to make sure doesn't happen. Right. But it does take years for that to happen. That's right. <laughs> Anybody? The mulch was put down because when they did the construction, it was all mud. So I, he, everything had to be stabilized, is what he had recommended. So that's the mulch that I used because I thought that that was the appropriate kind that I could use. All right. So we've we've got. The majority of the stuff has been done or is done. Got a couple of cleanup issues. And we got the, uh, what I'm seeing is the big things. We got to discuss to find Brandon and his company need to be paid. And then we got to find a way to stop creepage or wh whatever you want to call it. And Brandon, what specifically do you need from us for mid-October? Do you want our decisions on these things so that you guys can close out this court hearing yes please okay. i would like to know what what you want and how you feel so that i can feel confident going back to the judge because once we close it out it's, it's, it's closed okay. out so i would like to um seek some kind of demarcation of the wetlands so i don't know if you guys want to do the granite bounds or if you want a fence i mean i don't brandon what can we get your opinion on that what you think would be the best way to go I, I'm just uh, nobody wants a sign here I don't think anybody wants no, a sign. But what about the ground what about the granite bounds because I mean a fence can be taken down right I, I mean a granite bound can be pulled up too but right but we need something to like designate those spaces how far are I up did. I put, I'm, it's going to be filled in with wetlands and it's not going to be cut and yeah. then I put a rock barrier and then the bridge is there so like nobody goes in the area anymore because the bridge is almost coming halfway into it to block it so it's I, not like the yeah. kids are going in that space we understand just but usually we have people put up wetland signs to show yeah where the I mean there's a there's is. a new house built on Lincoln and they have every 20 feet they have yeah. signs that say don't go past this space and we're not suggesting that yeah you know, we're not suggesting right. that, but so we're suggesting we're something to, needs to be designated, not just for you, but for future owners. If you owners. sell the house, you know. It's, right. It's so I'm, I'm concerned about this left side and basically the, the no touch zone, except for cutting it once a year, pretty much follows the edge of the walkway and the edge of the patio. And then around, I guess you could consider this area right here, the walkway, but then everything to the right of this is also supposed to be no touch, no touch. You're not supposed to have chairs or anything like that in there. So, um, you know, my first thought was a split rail fence either side and down and around, which would probably look good, but I don't know how you feel about that. Granite bounds is another way do, to do it. It won't be as visual, but they are, uh, they're not easy to take back out of the ground. Um, so that's another thing that could be done as a long-term demarcation device. I'm just thinking about the next owners, you know, even lo looking past Jess because a split fill, uh, you know, any kind of fence. Rots. Somebody Guys, I, from I did 25 to... violations and I fixed all of them. Nobody told me to put up fences. I, there's not even a way that I could mechanically get a machine down to put stuff there anymore. We're not I suggesting that, like, I was just, we're, we're, not, just, we're just telling we're, you that our, our normal typical thing is that somebody has to, that we have people put up either the signs or a granite post. But then why wouldn't show. somebody tell me that before while I'm doing this? Like I'm trying to close this out. I'm trying to work with and everyone. I've, I've addressed all 25. 
I don't have any more money to like. I don't think you're understanding how costly this is. I do understand. Well, we understand very well how much it costs because we've had. I've had to do it in my own house, not not to this extent, but it's necessary to protect the wetlands. So something has to be put there. Especially when the wetlands are still being And somebody should have told used. me that before, guys. Like I, like, I can't keep going back and forth. I don't have the money to keep putting more stuff every time I come back. Okay, but so just to that point, that canoe that's sitting in the wetlands, you know that that's wetlands, but you have a canoe sitting there. The, that's not wetlands to the right. It's a dry space on the right. That's not wetlands. If you look up at the spot on the right, that's not wetlands. That's not flagged or anything. So I, and that's that's not the one there. Right there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the wetlands come across and they come to a point right over in here. Yep, yep, and there's a flag there that shows it. That paddleboard, the green one, guys, it can be moved. It's a paddleboard. It was put there because I was doing all this construction and it's laying on a wooden, it's it's abutting the wooden, like, uh, not wooden, the um, stone marker. There's, it's not inhibiting or stopping anything or sitting in water. So I would assume um, that the granite bounds probably are costly, but what if, is there a way to say that for now she could do the less expensive route of those green posts with the signs and then the further down the line, sure replace can. them with granite bounds? We have to do something. Something has to be done. I just, right now, Jess, we're just trying to tell Brandon what to do so that you can close this out. And, I'll, and I'm just trying to suggest ways that are less expensive than what, um, you know, a, a fence is not going to be cheap with the, the, you know, wood is not cheap right now. The other thing we need to discuss, so we need to decide what we want for that to, to show where the wetlands are, as we do every person that has to come through, has, to come us. through us that has land, that has wetlands, they put up their signs. Um, then we need to discuss the fines, but I mean, I guess I would hope that we're all on board that the first thing is Brandon needs to be paid because the town of Sutton can't pick up this bill and yeah. he needs to be paid for his hours of work. So that's my first and foremost right now. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So the, probably the cheapest way out is, is the signs, the most signs affordable. and pay Brandon. Pay Brandon, yeah. But, but I would side. want a stipulation that at some point, you know, if she wanted to change it to something less unsightly than those green posts with the signs, that she you could, could put, put a granite back. Granite back. Granite she, I would ask that she comes before us to do it. Just to give us, yeah, an update, but yeah. yeah. Um, so buffer zone signs? Yeah. I mean, that's cheapest. what... I think, think it's the cheapest product. I would think it's the cheapest way, because green... It, it would be. I think so. Uh, and the only other option is, but you bring in equipment in, is to put boulders. Hmm. That would require, you know, equipment. That you can't, is, yeah, no, you can't even do that down there. And now that all that work's been done already. Correct. I would have done that. That would have been great. I have plenty of rocks, but it's just nobody told me that I needed to do well, this. Well, yes, I, think, is I think let's, let's face facts. I think the reason we're, we're, we're just continuing to discuss this is because all the wetland area that everyone's seen behind me on the screen or on the TV or on at home was told to be kept as a wetland and not used. And it's clearly being used with kayaks and paddle boards and tubes and indoor outdoor carpets and Christmas lights and everything else and it, it looks very nice you did a really nice job but it's not supposed to be used and it's not fair to a couple other ones we're going to sign off after this that are not using the wetlands and no one wants to cost you any more money and that's why we're saying the signs are the cheapest things so do the signs for now yep Brandon bounds later if you want to get rid of the yep. signs or if you know if she figures out a way to get boulders in. Just come, but I want to see something. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so signs. All right. So, where would you like the signs to go? I mean, we've let people space them quite a, a distance this is away, just weren't. to indicate as many as fifty feet. Yeah. So, I mean, I I wouldn't probably all the turns, and then a couple on the straightaway. Yeah, you, you need a couple of straightaways for sure because both both sides can't like, be used. Like on either side of the walkway yeah. or just down here? Or? The other side of the walkway too, right? So starting at the 200-foot point up here, mm -hmm. down here, and then following... So maybe like one at the top, one at the corner. This so corner right here? Yeah, and then... Maybe this corner? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we're probably talking oh, like maybe. What, four or five signs. Yeah, and one... Two, well, both this side as well. Yeah. That side as well. One, yeah. two, three, four. Uh, maybe 
five, six. Yeah, six Half a dozen inch. signs ballpark. Those green poles are what, three dollars at Home Depot? So. Well, it's right. supposed to be a cemented post in the ground. So right, they have to be put in with, uh, usually go three feet into the ground, cemented yeah. so they like can't the, be easily they pulled back up. In the winter. Yeah, you you are, use uh, concrete isn't very expensive yeah. either. two and three quarter inch pipe with a cap, aluminum sign, yeah. sheet metal screws. That's going to be the it's most the cheapest way. cheapest way to do it. Yeah, with the option to change yep. it out when she has the money. And, and so I don't blame her for wanting to change it up because yeah. I wouldn't want to no, see I the signs either. either. I mean, yeah, more visual so appealing that, would be the granite. There's that, and then um, number two is Brandon's fee. And then we, we the do fines. need to talk about the $50,000 in fines and how we want to address that. I'd like to see a cleanup done where everything that's not supposed to be there isn't. That seems pretty simple. All the building materials and the, you know, all that stuff needs to go before the next court date. I don't. I mean, well, I mean, what the is issue that? is if she's if she's in hearings. With yeah, her but it doesn't doesn't this court date trump that she maybe can't he can't get rid of the product, but it could right. be put into an area that's not where it should be. Not where it should be. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Get it, get it out of where it should be. I have, a, <clears throat> I have a question to the chair. We don't have to issue a certificate of compliance before the first, for the, no. the next court date, right? No, no. right now we're just giving no? Brandon okay. guidance right. on what just, for the court date, so that they can get this okay. final piece. And I don't think we can have a discussion about <laughs> fines until, like you said, Brandon yeah. comes in and says I'm paid. Yeah, yeah. and all the yeah. other stuff is done. I feel like that's. I feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I don't want to do anything with the fines and then not. And then it, like it, it bite us yeah. later. And I'd also like to see the wood chips and the, where the chairs are. That's uh, whatever. It really doesn't matter. But uh, that's part of the wetlands area that we're saying we want. Demarcated, right? right. So, and, which means the, we don't. We don't want the chips there, right? You don't want the chips. Oh. You don't want the chairs, but you can't get rid of the chips. So just get rid of the chairs. Yeah. But don't remulch it. Just let it. Go natural. A couple of years yeah. will be all right yeah. out. Two, two years it will be gone. All right. Is that, Brandon, is that enough, do you think, for the court? I, I mean, I, I don't mean enough. Well, I, I have three, have enough three action you. points here. Um, pay me. Yeah. Buffer zone signs, half dozen. I can help um, Jessica to place those. Yeah. Okay. I can give her the, the specs for them. Um, and uh, clean up all the things that I was yeah, talking yeah. about and, and have that all out of there first yeah. and and uh and we can revisit and and then you'll revisit the, the fines, fines i presume yep okay yes. so uh we'll keep we'll keep this on the agenda yes yep. uh, for every every meeting and we'll we'll do an update every meeting and hopefully by the middle of october when the court date comes maybe it'll be resolved maybe it won't but if we have to extend it again then we'll just extend it again exactly yeah. Sure. But we've come a very long way. Yes. It, yeah, it truly, does, truly. Does a lot of progress good. has been made. Perfect. Thank you for right. your work, Brandon. Thank, Thank you, you very much. To everyone involved. Okay. Uh, okay. We don't know. Yeah, we don't need a continuation. Okay. Next up is 301 Putnam Hill Road, a discussion and update. Come on down. Welcome back. Hey. I haven't seen you in a while. In a while. Now I'm still from the old school. Could I use that as you a are more yeah. <laughs> than welcome to? I don't get a stiff neck from turning. Everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, my name's Margaret Bacon. I'm an engineer and owner of Civil Site Engineering, and I'm here representing my client, the owner, uh, Cindy Blondin. And we're here tonight just as a uh, very preliminary. Uh, yeah. regarding a potential development on her property on uh, Putnam Hill Road. So currently right now, uh, <coughs> Cindy and her husband owns two parcels of property. Uh, this parcel here is 19 acres. This parcel here is uh, almost 30 acres. Um, so there, she has enough frontage here for one uh, residential house lot. Uh, this back lot here has no frontage, but she does own both of these parcels. So presently, uh, she has been approached by a potential buyer 
who would like to put a single family house up on this back lot because they want some privacy. Um, and there are some wetlands out back here. There's, a, there's an old farm uh, pond that they uh, hint, dug back in the, uh, about 30 years ago, and I have some pictures of that. Uh, an old cart road that comes through here. So knowing, uh, I've done some jobs in Sutton before, knowing there's the alternative analysis procedure. We're just kind of up here at a very early stage, just trying to get a little feedback from the commission regarding uh, different alternatives uh, for driveways going through the wetland. Okay, um, so just um, to uh, get your bearings, Putnam Hill Road, the frontage, uh, there is an intermittent stream uh, in an old cattail swamp that comes through here. It also splits right here and, go, and it all flows this way. They're both intermittent streams. There is a perennial stream uh, further that way. I think it's called Dark Brook. Yes. Yeah, um, I don't believe that affects us at all. So I've got several different driveway scenarios and then also um, there is a potential because of uh, she only has enough frontage for a single family lot. She could also do a subdivision. Um, and that is also an alternative. And then I, I show that subdivision road here that you could do how many of her lots. I just didn't uh, do a full build out scenario. But it's it, more the road that's the issue at this point, right? That's correct. Right. That's correct. So basically, uh, all uh, uh, my client's trying to do is because she does have a potential buyer who would like to just build a single family ho house up on this back lot to kind of get a little consensus from the board, a little feedback regarding putting in one driveway and it, it would have to go through, cross that intermittent <coughs> stream twice. And I'm sure we probably have to do a uh, floorless box culvert in one. And the other one's fairly small, so. But all those details would be ironed out when I get into a full design. Uh, and then uh, continue the driveway and uh, put a single family house up here. And then, and also, just uh, I do have some pictures. Um, and these pictures were taken back in the, um, 90, in the 90s, correct? 93, 94. Yeah, when they, they, when they, they dug this pond. And then you can see there's the old logging road or cart path that, that does go there. There's still some remnants of it today. And then, uh, the field which now is all overgrown and I do have some better pictures that I can pass around but uh, the reason I show that that is for our preferred alternative it's preferable to use the old cart path okay which would be this this pink alternative okay so that's one alternative here's another alternative where I tried to minimize wetland impacts and load road lengths and here's an alternative but still it all comes back to this is our preferred alternative it just seems to make more sense uh, impact wise and, and design wise so there's some pictures that show the uh, the pond when it was uh, dug in the, the cart road uh, years ago that's um, all kind of grown up how old do you think the cart road is What's that? The cart road, is it old, an old cart path, like yeah. all the old ones in town? Yeah. The farmers knew the best way to get through the wet areas, right? They definitely did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and actually, it's, it's right along the edge of that property, along yeah. that stone wall, and then it comes up here, and, and the topography's not that bad either coming up this way. Uh, where over here, it's much more steep. When we were still living on the property, we used to cut the fields and cut the front fields, as you can see in the pictures. Um, we, we moved, gosh, in 2006 and sold our house on the adjacent lot. So um, at, since we moved, we stopped cutting. But yes, we used to use that car path, as did the farmers we bought it from, the people we bought it from that farmed it to get out to the back fields to cut it. And the nice thing about it is because it was so old and it had been there for so long and they figured it out long before we did, we never got stuck going through there, so. <laughs> Good overview. Thank you. Over to the board, or Brandon. Um, thoughts from everybody? Starting with me? Yeah. Why not? Okay. All right, well, if I was reviewing this, the first question I would have is, the, you know, regarding, you, you mentioned the alternatives analysis. Yep. So then the question is, okay, so 
You're mm -hmm. thinking about one house? Correct. So the question, first question is, well, why can't you, I, and I have a visual, right? I'll, I'll move this. So the question is, well, why couldn't the house be put up here in an upland area where there's access to the road and you wouldn't have to cross the stream yeah, or the wetlands? That, that's true, and I should have put that, that is an alternative. But then the, uh, the owner, the client, then would lose all the benefit of this, this 20 acre parcel that she has in the, in the rear. Mm -hmm. Then we get into Fifth Amendment of the Constitution questions, and whether or not you're being denied use of your land. <laughs> you know, in yeah. regards to Article 12 and 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 uh, the alternatives and all that. Right. So that that's that would be the first no. thing I would I would bring up. And, and you're right. I thought about that afterwards. That yeah, okay, that would be an alternative. That that's true. But like mm -hmm. I said, I, I think that alternative creates okay. a hardship for the. Uh, the owner. How so? Because, because they have this uh, 19 acres up here that then they wouldn't get the benefit from. Well, they, 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 they wouldn't be getting the highest and best use that, that they would like, but they would still be getting a use. Well, correct. And, uh, so oh, Mark, can you talk in the micro speak into the microphone? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nobody in the Zoom, but it really makes the recording. You can slide it over. Uh, you know, I'll just, I'm just going to sit down right now. <laughs> 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 We've had a long meeting already. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Right. That's okay. Um, so, yes, that, that would be one alternative. But uh, as I mentioned, she does have a potential buyer who does want to just put one house up in the back. That's the uh, that's what's attracts that buyer to that parcel is putting a house in the back. I, she has to put it in the front, or that the buyer has to put it in the front uh, that they're no longer potential buyers anymore. Okay. E you know, even under the Wetlands Protection Act, if there was no bylaw, uh, whenever you uh, cross a wetland across the stream, there's an impact avoidance and minimization requirement and. The commissions pretty much have carte blanche to allow up to 5,000 square feet of fill of BBW and so many linear feet of a of, uh, of bank, of a stream, a river. And, uh, you know, it's all at the commission's discretion. So if the commission feels that um, a house up front um, is enough, uh, you're allowing a use. You're not necessarily allowing the best and highest use that they would prefer. Uh, that's legally defensible. Uh, it's been done before. Um, but again, um, you may allow up to 5,000 square feet unilaterally without permission of any other state agencies or even the Corps of Engineers because once you hit that threshold, then there's federal level permitting as well, which most people try to avoid because it's a very expensive headache. Uh, uh, Margaret has written down numbers and so far all uh, everything that, that is in this concept stays under 5,000 square feet correct okay so you have that um, and then you have article 12 same kind of idea in point uh, 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 impact avoidance and minimization do you need to go back there do you have to go back there do you have an alternative isn't the best and highest you know that you want but not necessarily what you need and that's the hard decisions the commission always has to make is like, do you need this? No, you don't need this. And we're doing this to protect the, the wetlands and the public interests uh, associated with them. You know, otherwise, uh, they would have to design uh, an environmentally sensitive crossing over these two streams uh, into the back and minimize their impacts that way. Thank you. To the board. Anybody? Is there is there opportunities for mitigation? That's a question I think would be very good for my group. Uh, is there opportunities for mitigation? Yeah, there, uh, while there is some invasive species out there. Uh, what well, that's that's oh, a good what point I, that Jamie just made, right? Because yeah. when making the decision of whether or not um, to avoid and minimize, or if there's going to be adverse impact, that the the issue of mitigation is well, maybe we'll you will allow them to do the crossing and create a whole subdivision in the back, but 
uh, you're proposing to do A, B, and C for mitigation that makes up for it or more than makes up for it, and therefore it's okay. So I think it might require a little more homework from, from Margaret to, to see what can be offered up. Yeah, I think there's some old farm equipment back there, too, that could be removed. That'd be another form of mitigation. Yep, junk cleanup, invasive species, uh, removal. Uh, there's a couple others. And then there's the big one, which was just used, uh, well, being, uh, still under consideration with the Relaki Dam, which is conservation restriction. That's, that's when you run out of options. Mm -hmm. I think, too, I mean, I wouldn't really want to comment one way or the other until I had a better idea of whether it was a development or it was a single-family house. I see the two as having very different impacts on the aura and the BBW and the... It appears in this specific scenario it would be a single buyer with a single family. Well, there's also a road for the, 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 Yeah, just showing that is just, <coughs> that is a, an alternative, but right now the preferred alternative is for a single family house. Um, so are you asking us to comment on just the single family th that's house? That's correct. Because uh, Cindy would, you know, they'd like to transfer that property over to the buyers, but the buyers want to <laughs> feel a little more uh, comfortable and sure that they would be able to put a house back up there where they would like. How, on the, the piece of land that's with the frontage, how big of a parcel of property is that? If you were to cut across it, say, the what is that, the 25-foot delineation where the pond is or the BBW, from the BBW to the road? Uh, well, I know this is part of that 30-acre parcel. This is 30 acres, okay? It's a big parcel. So if I had to guess, the, a couple of acres anyways, right in there. So it is large enough to do something in. What, the front part? It is, and it, that's, the, that's completely up to the commission. If they offer up adequate um, mitigation and have an environmentally sound plan to cross the wetlands, then maybe you think differently. If they think of, uh, you know, Lackey Dam Road, you know, they really encroached into the aura, you could have said no, but they're offering up quite a bit of mitigation and they've potentially minimized their impacts to the commission's satisfaction. It's the same procedure of thought for this. I'd certainly rather see one house than a subdivision. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. Presently, like I said, this is all still preliminary. Um, to really do a, a, a full engineered plan and, and do all the drainage calcs to, to design those culverts, you know, you're, you're, you're talking thousands of, ten, ten thousands of dollars or, or more. And so it, at this time, you know, because it's not a developer here that's, it's just a, a Cindy and her husband who owns this property that would like to sell it, but without going to that expense at, at this point. You know, and, and to go to that expense only then to be denied too, you know, and I've, I've seen that happen, you know. And so right now, so that's kind of, you know, the purpose or the intent of this plan is just to get a little feedback to, before that somebody does spend that type of money to see if that it, it is doable. And, and obviously I'd have to review all the wetland boundaries and wetland yeah. types, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just above the number 31 on the parcel of property, Mm -hmm. There's three rectangular. You see that in the trees. Mm -hmm. What is that? Have those you been were, back there? Those were the. Those were all fields. There were five fields back there. They're all overgrown now. But it's interesting that they still show up on the GIS that way. So those were pastures, and the trees are pasture edges. Yeah, yeah the wetlands are pretty much just down in that that lower point. Once you go up that hill, that's all upland, up where those rectangulars are, it's fields. Beautiful. Let's do a little. Here we go. Oh, That's yeah, 1997. Wow. <laughs> All right, and this is where um, the three houses are over here. You got a couple houses over here. These are all pastures at the time. Uh, here's that wet meadow with the brook that goes right through the middle of it. So this would be it would be the same brook that they'd be crossing. And then there's another one here. 
along the back uh, I forget the name of the family but they they just came in for that uh, the pool that was really tight in the back oh yeah, yeah. that's uh, right over here and I know for a fact that there's wetland right in here I, I've done a lot of walking around this area <laughs> as you know we all have <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, let's see, let's see, 2001, 2005, still pretty well defined. Now starting to grow in. 2008, this is 2011, growing in more. 2013, growing a little bit more. 15, and then we get to 19, and we've got all the houses. Cameras don't lie, huh? Big Brother was watching. Yeah. Okay. So, that it, just want to make is that what we're just looking just to get our opinion if we have any issue with moving forward with a design for a single family house? For a single house? family house. In the back. Mm. In the back. In the back. If we, you know, try to meet the, uh, the Sutton, uh, you know, policies and regulations and minimize and yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd say that it comes down to impact avoidance minimization, um, an environmentally innovative design for any crossing of the stream, as in the you know the box culvert embedded or three sided, and then uh, whatever mitigation they they uh, offer to make the commission comfortable with what they're trying to do. Yeah. Everybody okay? <clears throat> yeah. Considering the size of the parcel and the potential for future use, um, to the extent that we did this and the intention was to develop a single family home, I'd want to see some sort of definition to that on a go forward basis, whatever form that took. Definition as in there's some kind of a document promising that, that there will be no further, you know, that there's not going to be a subdivision in the future. That sounds kind of like a conservation restriction. Yeah. It is. It's exactly what it is. And, that, and that's part of the a, a mitigation alternative. Yeah, it's a, it's a component of mitigation, yeah. right? Because oh, presently, you know, there's about, what is it, 40 acres? Uh, yeah, it's 46.27 acres. <laughs> and, then when you, and when you sell this property, it's all going to that one potential buyer for one single family house. So, so a conservation restriction could be one of our uh, mitigation measures. I think what we're trying to avoid is approving a single family lot and then having a developer come in for the rest of it to Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And Got they it. and then they've created their own hardship. Right. Right. Okay. Which right. this commission has had plenty of headaches with before. Yeah. Does anyone from the public have any I, I know it's not a public hearing, but we have people in the audience, so I just figured I No. Okay. We good? Everybody good? I'm good if you good. Enough? Does that help? I think so, yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for the overview. <laughs> okay, nice to see you. Good. Have a great Thank night. Thank you. Okay, so we, this is for a short meeting, it's a long one. Oh, okay. um, we had a complaint at 350, 354, and 358 West Sutton Road. Come on down. And if you could just state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Barbara Beatty. I currently reside in uh, 1401 East Otis Road in East Otis, Massachusetts. And I own the property at 358 West Sutton Road. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Gordon, Gordon Whitten, uh, uh, 31 Brewster Lane in Acton. I own the property on 354. Okay. So I believe, is this the one that's for sale and it was it listed as three different lots and then yes. a realtor or someone noticed some clearing of the property? Yes, and I will bring up those pictures once again. Okay, West Sutton Road. Oh, why, why would the pictures go? Um, maybe. And the, the lot lines aren't populating on that, and I don't know why. Here, oh, here we go. All right. And 24. Okay. Uh, 
and to Y. Just a moment. Oh, there it is. New share. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So that's the first picture. Is that where it was cut, Brandon? On the yes, and and there's uh, there's a ditch right here, and there's wetland on the back side of this. Um, to go back to another, just go back to the town website. Is this already divided into three individual lots, or is it Th still? There's already three pre-existing lots okay. of record here. And I, I don't know why the lot lines aren't showing up, but um, pretty much abuts the cemetery and goes up to s somewhere in here, th the three lots. It's They're rectangular, come down like this. So you have this little open body of water, and there are wetlands in the vicinity uh, on site. So the, the probability of the clearing being within 100 feet of the wetlands is very high. And back to the pictures. So I think on the back side of this berm is where that, that water body is. Is it? Yeah. That was dug as a water hole for the, we grazed cattle in there in the in the 50s? Right. I have a feeling that the, the, the cattle hole uh, was probably in the wetland at one time. Yeah, lowest you know, That's usually where they would they dug. <laughs> but, you know, the, it, it's still a wetland. To not be a well and have to be a stormwater structure that was duly permitted and maintained. Is this the one that we talked about last week that appeared to have been flagged and the flags were, some of the flags have been removed? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of the birds, the, uh, the, the property was flagged and then some birds decided that they were going to come down and, and use the flags for their nests. So some of the flags were removed by the birds. So then the property was reflagged, and then we had um, some people came in and uh, did some brush clearing. Unfortunately, they didn't stay outside of the blue flagging. So it was flagged. They were supposed to stay out, but they didn't. They were probably supposed to stay outside of the outside of the blue flags, right? right. The blue flags were the right edge there. of the BVW, not the hundred foot aura, right? That's so, usually what's done. Correct. So, so it was they shouldn't have been they should have been outside of the flags plus a hundred feet. Correct. Anything within that hundred foot zone requires pre construction review. And here's one of them right there. <clears throat> So it's pretty close to the road. Hmm. It's another one. Yeah. So there are no more plans of additional brush clearing. Um, the reason why the brush was cleared was so that potential property buyers could see the property because before that it was overgrown with vines and trees and so forth so unfortunately um, they went too far and <clears throat> we, we don't have any more plans of uh, any more brush clearing they didn't take any trees down did they just brush no. and vines just, just a yes yeah. some invasives probably not that I'm aware of. I, I think it doesn't one, look like it. Nice. One of the biggest things was when someone were to develop this, whether it's one, two, or three houses, and they come in front of us, we just don't want the buyer to come in and say, I didn't know it was wetlands, you know, and then have a lot more work behind them. So I think we just make sure if anyone comes in for anything, you know, they, have to, they would have to file on any of the three lots, uh, yeah. make sure the flags stay where they need to be in. I mean, Don't do we had a survey else. company come in and uh, plot the flags on, on a plan, 
Yeah, I have. So we have that. Okay. And now that's been given to potential to buyers. Yep. Yeah, it's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as the buyers know that there's well, well, they're gonna have to, have to come yeah. see us. Yeah. Okay. That's right. uh, yeah. No more trees. No more cutting. Okay. No more spending money. <laughs> yeah, no. And we don't want you to spend any more either. We just try to and thank you for being here all thank night you too. For thank you for coming. Any You're welcome. anybody else here with any questions? Anyone for the public on this one? No. The relatives. <laughs> he had a good show tonight. So, so um, and to recap, Mr. Uh, Chairman, yeah. there, uh, there's a, a cease and desist uh, was sent uh, to the owners. Yeah. So I, I would presume that that will stay in place. Um, so no further cutting, but no restoration required at this time. No restoration. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay, so that 350, 301, 324. Uh, next site visits for Lincoln Road. Yeah. I, I believe from the street anyway that looks done. For Lincoln Road. Uh, I watched the last meeting in the driveway. It was paved a, I don't know, a few weeks ago, so. Okay. Um. The signs had not yet been put up. And they I haven't. Are now. I, they are now? Okay. This, you know. I'm I know the owner. No. Um, oh. No, they did a really, they did a really, I was got a comment. They right. did a really nice job with that project. I, I watched it happen. Uh, very neat construction. Everything was done. The DP sign went up right away. Um, so I, it was impressive to watch. Um, is everybody happy with the, the grass growth? That grass grew. Okay. I'm, I'm jealous. That, <laughs> that guy got grass to grow in. Those were the three big things. Signs, yeah. grass, driveway. Yeah. And if those of all three have been taken care of. I, I, actually, I forgot about the signs on that one, so I would have. Anyway. That was one of the last ones that where uh, the signs were going up at the limited disturbance. And then through urging by Mike, uh, if you remember, uh, the signs were pushed back to be along the wetland boundary. That's right. After that. Okay. Too many people complaining they don't want to look at signs at the edge of their lawn. How many signs did they end up putting up? Just out of curiosity. Is a lot. I forget how many of the number is. Okay. Oh. Uh, anyway. Good. Complete COC. I'll make a motion to issue a complete certificate of compliance for 4 Lincoln Road. I'll second. Nicole made a motion for a complete COC. Robin seconded. Nicole, how do you vote? Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I vote vote aye. Okay, the next one. Oh, we're going to sign that one. Uh, the next one up is a 8 Virginia Ave, and this is a 1998 subdivision. Oh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. There's been so much confusion with this one, um, but I think we have it figured out. Because <laughs> it, it goes back a while, a while, and nobody was around at the time. So, you, like, we're trying to, and, you, and then the, the file's missing. It's not in. All right, well, almost tell us. 25 years ago. Right, so. Help us sort The it original order of conditions was for the road and the roadway infrastructure, like the detention basins. It wasn't for the individual lots. Uh, and as far as we can tell, there was no certificate of compliance requested for the road. The road has been accept was accepted by the town. It's now a town roadway. So it would be incumbent upon the town of Sutton to ask for the certificate of compliance for the roadway for that uh, DP file number 303-341. Uh, the, the person that came in was asking for uh, the COC for a specific lot in that subdivision. And there were never any notices of intent that we could find for any of the lots. So I don't think they, this person needs to do anything for... Is there any chance that the, the road was like the lot they're asking for at one point was the, the same address? You, you, your guess, guess is, is as good as mine, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm just making things. I'm spitballing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what do, we, do we just don't do anything? 
I, I, I don't, I don't want I'm, these people hung out to dry. As a I'm not convinced that, that they need to do anything. Yeah, what about as a commission if we drafted a letter that said that a, we have no record of any filing ever been made and the only one applied for well, was for the for that roadway. particular lot. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That might be a good thing to and put on they record. Could, right. They could give it to their attorney and see if it carries any... You know, if, if they're all. stuck in a closing scenario, that might be enough to because unstick that, it. Because if there's not a COC on that property, that could hold title up. You know, so I don't know well, if I we. Wonder, was, I don't know if we write letters as boards. Do we do that? Good idea. I mean, I I have no problem with it to keep it personally. Moving. Just just factual. Just there is none. There was never one. We have no record of anyone ever being filed for that, for that project on that lot. I mean, there were times that people were supposed to have orders of conditions. They, the files missing. They have a. They've put it on record, and so you can't do it. It was for the roadway, not for the lot. Yeah. yeah, just for the roadway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we need a vote no. on that? Mm. No. Okay. Three twenty Putnam Hill Road. Which one's that? I looked that up. Let me. Uh, a lot going on on Putnam Hill Road all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt... It's a very busy place. I, I wish I knew they were You're here because I would have tried to bring them up, well, earlier. Yeah, let me bring it up. This might be one that required Wanda's presence. <laughs> like, she... Because she didn't tell me what that was about. Sometimes I have to look at the agenda and then say Wanda you put this on the agenda what's what's going on <laughs> we so we should we just move it to two we weeks did, she didn't I put any think. there's nothing to sign for it so and what do you have lots of stuff oh you have, we have the second half of it no, no. <laughs> this is what three this is lackey dam so I'm not doing anything she might have written me an email at one time oh here we go Burbank uh, Wanda writes, they're looking for a certificate of compliance, but I don't know from here if I received any paperwork. If I did, it's in my office, maybe on my desk. Yeah. Should we table that? I would yeah, say yes. There's, there's, you, unless they're chomping at the bit because they need to do a closing, usually these things can wait. Central Turnpike. Right. But here's the thing: is that if, if Wanda never received any application, you don't. Uh, there's one that Jamie doesn't sign because he's uh, negatory. Right. Okay, that, so just that's that's Burbank, I believe. Yeah, that's that, the that goes to him. So we have to sign that one. Yeah, this is the old one. Yeah. All if, right, so let's just table that one if we don't have any information yeah, on it. If if Wanda doesn't receive uh, an application and the engineer statement, I I want her to not. Put it on the agenda. Okay, and we've told that. I'll, I'll remind her. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about? She might be watching from home. <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll table, and then for 141 Armsby Road has two DOP numbers: 303904 and 303905. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the the applicant came to me because they concerned that they they coming up on the three year uh, expiration date. Um, so they were. You know, wondering if they need to come in, and my answer is actually no. You don't have to come in because of the COVID extension, right. and the COVID ex uh, it, was, it it fit in that time period. And their new COVID extension, uh, uh, their new COVID expiration date is December 31, 2023. So they still have over a year. They extended it again. No, that's just the way it is. They the they hit days. it it's like 400 something days perfectly. Because they got they got their permit in 2019, <laughs> and it, and extended the whole 400 and so on days. So there were over 400 days that their permit. At least they reached extended. out to. Yeah, they did the, the right PSR. thing. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, what, what is this the um, retirement development yeah, the over down 50. behind Valancourt's building? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Well, that was nice to reach out. So okay, so they're good. And you've told them that. I told right. them that. I received an email, and we're all good. All right. I think is there, that, anything else? Is, yeah, is there anything else? I hope I didn't miss anything. Not on the <sighs> Anyone from the public? Anyone at home want to talk about anything? <laughs> we'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Nicole made a motion to adjourn. Robin seconded a quality vote. Aye. Robin, how do you vote? Aye. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. I Bill, vote aye. Have a good night, everybody.
I think, Tim, I have a couple things over there I haven't signed yet. Oh, okay. Yes. <coughs> that was the one from Virginia Rab that doesn't exist. <laughs>